Good morning, everyone. How are you all this morning? My name is Makeda Valletta, and I am alive on YouTube and Instagram at the same time. So I'm live on my YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81, and I am live on my travel page for Instagram. So um, in case... Well, in case you're unfamiliar with me, my name is Makeda Valletta, and I do a bunch of things. I'm a nutritionist. I um, am a trainer. I'm into holistic health and medicine. And um, I am a native New Yorker who lives in Chicago, and I travel quite a bit in the country and out of the country. And everywhere I go, I'm always examining access to a healthy, active lifestyle. So I have um, a couple of pages. Um, I have my page, The Body Scientist. This is both on Instagram and YouTube. The Body Scientist is more geared towards my health talks, okay? And on Instagram, please let me know if you can hear me because I have my mic. This mic is connected to my Instagram, not my YouTube. Um, so yeah, I have my page, The Body Scientist, where I talk about health, um, fitness, nutrition, stuff like that. I have my page, The Renaissance Amazon, where I talk about sexuality, social issues, um, cultural issues, stuff like that, activism. Um, and then I have this page, the page Makeda of Letter Travels, where I'm speaking about my travels and certain observations and cultural things. And so what I'm going to talk about today kind of crosses all those paths. So um, I have a block on my IG pages, the Body Scientist and Renaissance Amazon. I cannot go live on those pages. Um, so, so I'm going live on YouTube. And I'm going live on my Makeda Valletta Travels IG page because I don't have a block there. And it kind of pertains to all these different things. So thank you. So what I want to talk about this morning, okay? Um, some of you, if you don't follow all three of my pages, you should because there's different pieces of this conversation on different pages, right? So um, some of you who've been listening to me lately on Makeda Valletta Travels page, and a Renaissance Amazon page, you see that I've been talking about West Africa quite a bit. Um, and today I want to talk about it more. Okay. I want to talk about it from a health perspective. I'm somebody who researches, I look up facts. Okay. And, um, you know, when I went, to, I went to Senegal, I went to Africa for the first time in 2022, I went to Senegal. It was a traumatizing experience. And I have several videos on my page, Makeda Valletta Travels and the body scientist where I talk about my experience there. Right. Now, I'm a very straight up person, okay? Um, me being American, one thing I have learned, I've always known, but it's become more evident to me, is that Americans speak the truth more. You know, a lot of people in a lot of countries, they don't want to speak the truth about their countries. You know, they don't want to speak the truth about their government, or they can't. It's culturally not acceptable. Um, it's culturally not acceptable, or they'll get in trouble for it. And so, as an American, when we speak up, we're looked at as, you know, attacking. However, people attack America all the time. Uh, people who have immigrated to America um, have attacked America in my face and talk bad about the country, and, but yet they live here, right? When Americans, um, especially black Americans, okay, when we go move to a whole nother country, we usually go and we, we're denouncing America, okay? We, when if you look on YouTube, you see all the Black Americans who moved to Africa. They're talking bad about America. Okay, um, America's this, America's that. America shuts me out. So, for me, because health is my priority, and I'm very sensitive. Like good quality air is so important to me. I always have fresh plants in my house. I get. I don't use air fresheners or incense. I have fresh flowers in my house, so I get my scents from flowers. What I put on my skin. I don't use regular soap. I don't use. I haven't used Dove or. I've, you know, any of that commercial soap, I haven't used that on my skin in like 20 years, neither have I used commercial lotion, okay? So what I put on my skin, the air that I breathe, I'm very sensitive. I can't stand like Glade plugins and just really thick polluted air. Now, being from New York City, there's polluted air in New York City. There's polluted air in American cities. LA is even worse. But you don't, it may be polluted, but I don't feel it. When I was in Senegal, I felt like I was choking because the air was so thick and so dusty, and I just didn't understand. Like, I've been many places in the Caribbean, South America, Central America, never experienced such bad air quality. 
and I was supposed to be in Senegal for, um, I think 10 days. And I left on day four, like my, my chest was hurting. Like I literally had heart pains. Um, my nose hairs were like, I felt like I had like soot on my nose hairs and it caused me to start doing research. And when I started, um, when I started doing research, I started coming across all the information about how bad the air quality is in Senegal. Okay. And then I looked at other West African countries because going to Senegal, I, I kind of felt like, okay, all West African countries aren't the same, even though I feel like they have a common thread. But I said, I don't want this experience in Senegal to ruin me. So let me look at the other countries. Let me look at Ghana and Nigeria and their air quality is worse than Senegal. Okay. So that freaked me out about, you know, going to Ghana or Senegal. And every time I look at videos, like, you know, there's plenty of people on social media posting videos in Nigeria, posting videos in Ghana. And every time I look at the videos, I'm looking, you can see how smoggy and thick and dusty the air looks. Okay. It never looks clear. It never looks fresh. I also notice I don't see any trees. Okay. Um, I'm a tree person. Okay. Where I live, where I'm from in, on the island of Manhattan, lots of trees. Okay. On my block and across the street. Um, where I live in Chicago, lots of trees and flowers growing and butterflies and um, um, uh, bees. Like people say there's no bees in my neighborhood in Chicago. They're literally natural habitats in people's yards where they have tons of bees, tons of um, ladybugs, tons of butterflies and bunny rabbits. Okay. In New York State, where I'm from, has some of the most beautiful agricultural land, some of the richest soil. Okay. I remember when I was going to Cuba, when I went to Cuba, I had never seen soil so rich looking. The, the soil in Cuba, and that's one of the reasons, there were several reasons why I wanted to go to Cuba, but one of them was because of their food system. Um, that I had learned about that when I was in my first graduate program, about how they didn't monocrop and mass produce. You know, they grew in s small quantities in different places, right? So in, in Cuba, the soil is like just beautiful orange red color whenever i look at somebody in west africa and they're, they're they're you know there's several videos on youtube where people are trying to tell black americans that we should come buy some land right and i look at them walking through the fields in ghana walking through and i see them building these houses in ghana all i notice is that that land looks dried out that land looks depleted and i'm not even a farmer okay but i could just tell that land don't look right that land does not look lush Okay, I barely see any trees. And every time I comment and say, oh, there's no trees, they're like, oh, you can plant trees. And I'm like, are you dumb? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just serious. Because it takes years and decades, okay, for trees to grow big again. So what I do see in Ghana is a bunch of little scrawny looking little trees. And a lot of West Africa is not enough trees for me, right? Now, I'm observant. I believe in observing the obvious. I'm not going to go anywhere with rose colored glasses and I'm not going to lie about what I'm seeing. Okay. People come to my city, New York city all the time. And they say New York is dirty. It's too many people. Okay. Like you don't see us having a hissy fit and losing our minds about it. You know, um, people observe what they observe and they're entitled to their opinion and everybody doesn't have to like everything, but ultimately opinions are one thing. Facts are facts, right? So, um, so let me just tell you some facts, okay? Because this this conversation is really about health more more than anything. And so to me, where I where I decide to live and put myself, me being able to live a healthy, active lifestyle is so important. And if you go on my page, um, the body scientist, I have several videos where I talk about a healthy, active lifestyle in New York, a healthy, active lifestyle in New Orleans, and Mexico City. Everywhere I go, I talk about this, right? So let me just say that in Ga in Africa, Africa period, okay. Air pollution is now the second leading cause of death, okay? Af um, air pollution is now the second leading cause of death in Africa. Now, another thing that you, people need to look at. Now, all the stuff I'm going to tell you is going to shock you, okay? And just more um, solidifies the fact that I have good sense. I love my brain. But anyhow, looking at life expectancy. People love to trash America and how bad the food is in America, and how bad childbirth is in America. 
And there are truths to that. It's just that America is not anywhere near the worst in the world, okay? So the fact that air pollution is now the second leading cause of death in Africa right now. Now, we look at life expectancy. The life expectancy in Ghana is 64 years old, okay? The life expectancy in South Africa is 65 years old. The life expectancy in Nigeria is a mere 52. What? I thought the 60s was young, but 52 life expectancy? Senegal life expectancy is 68. Now, the life expectancy in the U.S. is like 78. When you look at countries like Costa Rica, all those countries, I didn't write them all down, but I will, I will post it. I'll post it. You can always Google life expectancy in whatever country you want and you'll see. But in the Americas, it's not that low. When you look at the Americas and Europe, it's all like in the 70s, okay? Um, late 70s even, okay? Now, looking at the air quality scores, okay? When it comes to um, air quality, because I just said air pollution is now the second leading cause of death in Africa, the whole continent, okay? So let's go through some countries of air quality, okay? Number, Rwanda is number 13 in the world, worst air quality. Number 13 in the world. Okay, Uganda, number 17 in the world, worst air quality. Now, let me tell you, like, the ones that are before that is, like, India and China. I'm good on the, those parts of the world. In the, it, like, if you look at the, the most polluted, the cities with the most polluted air, it's a whole bunch of Indian cities, okay, in East India. Okay, so um, Nigeria is number 18 in the world, worst air quality, okay. Um, Ethiopia, number 23. Ghana, number 27. Um, Gabon, number 32, Zambia, number 34, and there's a bunch in between, South Africa, number 39, Ivory Coast, number 42, and Senegal, number 47. America is number 99. Um, the UK and Canada is like 100-something. Costa Rica, okay. Um, so a lot, of the, the, a lot of the countries in the Americas has way better air quality, okay. Because in, in America, as I've been to Colombia, I've been to Mexico, I have been to Ecuador, I have been to Costa Rica. Um, I said Colombia, Ecuador, Costa Rica, Mexico. Yeah. And then I've been, you know, to Haiti and Jamaica and some Caribbean islands. But the air quality, Trinidad has some of the best air quality in the world. Um and so, okay, so Senegal is number 47. Okay, so Colombia is number 63 in the world. Brazil, number 81. The Netherlands, number 87. The U.S., number 99. Nicaragua is 100. U.K., 101. Costa Rica, 107. Canada, 111. Suriname, which is a small country in South America, is number 113. Belize, number 116. Trinidad, number 118. Puerto Rico, number 122. And the last few countries were all in the Americas, like Guam, which is, you know, American territory, but yeah, so the air quality, and if I, when I was in Senegal, I was so, I was suffocating, and it took me days after I came back to the States to feel good. My chest was hurting, and I was mad at everybody, everybody who I knew personally who tried to act like, you know, Senegal was so great, and everybody on the internet, okay, who's not telling the full truth. I was mad, okay? I was mad because I felt sick, and I'm like, do people not notice this air? You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys don't notice that? Or is it that people go to Africa and they're like, I'm in the motherland, which I don't think Africa is the motherland. That's a whole nother conversation. But I'm in the motherland, and so I can't say anything bad. People can come to New York and say New York is so dirty, but then you can go to Ghana, Nigeria, and Senegal, and you don't say anything. And that whole shit is dirty. I'm sorry. It just is. It's not that I'm trying to hate. It's just a fact, <laughs> okay? It's just a fact. It just is. All right? So, okay, so now, air quality is not monitored in most cities in Africa, okay? They don't even have the resources to do it, and they don't monitor it. Um, nearly 100% of the population in South Africa, nearly 100% of the population in South Africa is breathing air that doesn't meet the World Health Organization standards. It's five times worse 
than the, the, the World Health Organization's air quality standards, okay? Sub-Saharan Africa is facing a childhood cancer crisis as well, okay? Because when I look at the air quality, even when I was in Senegal, I'm like, these people, they have to have bad health with this air. And then the food, okay? The food is all ultra processed. It's like impossible to find real juice. And then, you know, in my travels, like when I go to Latin America, whether it be Dominican Republic, Cuba, even Colombia, the women don't wear a lot of makeup, okay? Dominican Republic, the women don't wear makeup at all. Um, Cuba either. But a lot of the African countries, same thing with Haiti, they wear a lot of makeup, okay? So that doesn't help with the health either. And I noticed even in America, now it's not just foreign people, but I noticed it a lot with people from um, the Caribbean, African countries, like they'll have the strongest artificial air freshener in their car, in their house. And I definitely had that experience when I was in Senegal and it literally makes me sick. So it was like the air outside was thick and full of particles and particulate matter. The air in my Airbnb kept spraying out um, air freshener. Then I had switched to a different Airbnb and I talk about this in my videos on this topic. I had switched to another Airbnb and it was even worse. I can't do that. I'm like, you people can't, you can't even tell. So when you look at the health in um, Senegal, it's not good. Okay. It's a lot of cancer now. So um, Sub-Saharan Africa, okay, this is Sub-Saharan Africa is facing a childhood cancer crisis. Annually, nearly 90% of the more than 100,000 children who develop cancer in Sub-Saharan Africa die, okay? So 90% of the children who get cancer in Sub-Saharan Africa die. So is that a place, would I want to leave America and like move my family over there or have a family over there? Does that make sense? Or even my own health, right? And why would I move someplace? Okay, let me just keep going. I'm just dealing with facts. The top 20 highest infant mortality rates are all African countries except Afghanistan. Okay, Afghanistan is number one worst infant mortality rate in the world. The, the following 19, all African countries, okay? So people always talk about how bad the infant mortality rate is in America, and America needs to do better for sure. And America can do better for sure, okay? I'm all about holding people accountable, including my own people. But we're not, we're not anywhere near the worst in the world, so why would I move to a place where it's worse? Everything is worse, okay? Every single health stat is so much worse. Then, um, okay, so something I learned, because I'm not um, a geography person, but I told you what I observed with the land. Whenever I see Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, West Africa, a lot of the African countries, when I look at it, because I, I really despise the desert. I'm not a desert person. I, I'm like, put me in the rainforest and the tropics and the swamp before you put me in the desert. I like humidity. I like a lot of lush greenery and trees and plants. And when I look at a lot of African countries, East Africa looks more lush to me. But West African countries, a lot of times, it looks very, again, dry. The soil looks depleted. And I'm not a farmer, but I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking that soil does not look good. It just doesn't. So now I start coming across the geography, okay, the problems with the geography in Africa, which I had no clue. But um, the poor geography, soil, rainwater, and lack of navigatable waterways within sub-Saharan Africa and the lack of natural harbors and the difficulty maintaining livestock um, because of there's um, some disease called testy fly disease or something, no, some disease carrying testy, I don't know, something called testy fly disease, right? Um, in the vast barrier of the Sahara Desert, all of that makes all of that makes um, growing things and, and having, you know, it, 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 it is causing environmental issues, issues with food, um, water, stuff like that. Ghana, in general, has a really serious problem with clean drinking water, okay? Um, I wrote the, the, I have some notes about that too that's not in this notebook. I wrote it somewhere else. But what I can remember off the top of my head, it was like 70% of Ghana has water that's like contaminated with fecal matter or something, or 90%, or it was like 90 or 95%. And I think it said 90, 
5% doesn't even clean their water adequately. So there's a huge drinking water problem in Ghana as well. But I didn't realize that the rivers in Africa are hard to navigate and they basically don't lead into oceans like they might in the US, okay, or other lands, okay? And so it causes issue. And there's a lot of desert, okay? Um, the Sahara Desert is several times the size of any desert in the world, okay? It's as large as the 48 states of the U.S. That's how big the Sahara Desert is. People of Sub-Saharan Africa have been the most insulated from the rest of the human race, which surprised me, okay? Said people of Sub-Saharan Africa have been some of the most insulated people um, in the world because of the, the geography, which I'm like, now I don't know if that's true now because we have planes and people can get on planes, but for many years that was the case. And also, female genital mutilation still happens in Ghana and many African countries. Now, I did a video the other day about, on my page, uh, Makeda Valera Travels, about the anti-gayness in Ghana. Um, I did a whole video about that. And, you know, just suppression, right? So cutting off the clip is wild to me, okay? Whenever I... I I, it just is wild. And I'm going to tell you, it comes from religion. I always tell people, I wasn't raised religious, okay? I wasn't brainwashed with the Bible. I wasn't brainwashed with the Quran. I wasn't brainwashed with none of that. I was raised to think for myself. I was raised to do thorough research and look up facts before I form an opinion, okay? And just in my traveling, I kept feeling like Africa is, and I, okay, I know it's a huge continent. It's a general statement. I'm not going to say that there's no lush land, but to me, it is not as lush as the Americas. And I'm talking about North America to South America to the Caribbean. It's not, okay? I've never seen anybody in Ghana or Nigeria or anywhere in West Africa or South Africa where it looks like what I see in the United States, what I see in New York State, what I see in Washington State what I see in Maine and Vermont, what I see, what you see in Canada, Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, okay, Ecuador, Argentina, Cuba, St. Lucia, okay, those places are so lush. I never see that. And so I started to, to dig and I found that there's a lot of soil erosion, a lot of deforestation, okay, in West Africa, a lot of the African countries, South Africa too. And a lot of it is coming from people themselves. Haiti has the same issue where people themselves are cutting down the trees to, to make timber, uh, to make charcoal to burn, which then contributes to how bad the air is. OK, it contributes to the, the, the particulate matter in the air and they're, they're 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 destroying their own lands. OK. With that. And you can't I can't breathe. I need trees. I need trees. I have plants in my house. You know, like you need trees to be able to breathe. And so to me, I'm like, you know, it just doesn't look as green and lush to me as the Americas. And I come and look at it, South America has, the Amazon rainforest is the biggest rainforest in the world. It's a lot bigger than the rainforest in the Congo. Um, South America has, is more biodiverse. It has more species of trees, okay? It has more trees and more species of trees than the continent of Africa. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm like, oh, so I'm not tripping this thing. Cause I'm thinking, I always pictured, you know, Africa to be a lot more lush. And like, like I'm saying, I'm not saying it doesn't exist anywhere, but every city I look at, every African city I look at, I never see any trees. You know, if you look at Washington, DC, New Orleans, even New York city, New York city has more trees than any other city in the country. Okay. Um, people don't, People don't see that because a lot of times when people come to New York, they just go to the touristy areas. But New York City is full of trees, especially where I'm from, upper Manhattan. Oh my God. And big, tall, old trees, not little baby trees. Whenever I look at the trees in West Africa, the little baby trees, we have big old trees that you could tell have been there for hundreds of years. Okay. Um, Costa Rica, I've never been someplace that's so green and full of plants and you know, and it's like the soil, everything is just like, you know, rich and beautiful. And so the female general, the female general mutilation, that's, that is completely there 
to suppress sexual energy, to pre suppress a woman's sexuality, um, coming from religion, because they believe that, oh, a well, woman, you know, the clitoris is the only part of the body that is only there for pleasure, okay, the clit. And in these patriarchal religions, New York, yeah, out of, out of cities, New York has more trees in it than any other major city in America, yes, you can look it up. And most of those trees are in the Bronx, because I live uh, upper Manhattan. I live in Upper Manhattan. Like Brooklyn, to me, doesn't have enough trees. Brooklyn people talk a lot of shit, but Brooklyn does not have enough trees or parks to me. The bulk of them are in the Bronx and um, Upper Manhattan. And when people come to New York, they're usually in Lower Manhattan, and Lower Manhattan doesn't really have any trees or parks. Now Staten Island, I've never really explored it. I've been there several times. I'm about to explore Staten Island this summer because it's in my city. It's a borough that we all ignore. So I want to go see what's up with Staten Island. So there might be a lot of trees over there too, but it's definitely a lot in the Bronx. Um, but yeah, female genital mutilation. Okay. When I hear about that, I'm just, it just makes me want to just rub my clit in gratitude. Okay. Because yeah, the Bronx is the greenest borough. I think the Bronx gets slept on. I'm going to do a video about the five boroughs of New York. Because the Bronx is actually my favorite borough. People try to shit on the Bronx, but the Bronx is nice. It's the only borough that's on mainland. The Bronx is way above sea level, has a lot of trees. Okay, it's not it's not gentrified like Brooklyn and you know parts of Manhattan and parts of Queens. The Bronx is the illest to me. Okay, so those of you listening, if you come to New York, you got to come to the Bronx. And I would love to do tours in New York. That's something that I want to do. I want to do tours in New York and Chicago, like just my own personal ones. Um, so I would love to do that. I wanted to do it um, on, what is it, Airbnb experiences, but then they stopped, they stopped that for some reason. Um, so yeah, the female genital mutilation, that, that the, I don't believe in uh, circumcising men either. That's also genital mutilation, right? But with the women, because the clit is, has more nerve endings than any other part of the body, um, it's even more excruciating and crazy, okay? And they're both crazy. I don't believe in circumcising men or women, but the female genital mutilation, okay? Cutting these girls off. You definitely do a tour of me, okay? If you, if you, if you um, ever have plans on coming to New York and you guys want me to um, do that, I will. You want to go to the museums in New York? Yeah. I need to go to the museums in New York this summer. I grew up in the museums in New York. And I got museumed out. My parents had me, my brother in the museum all the time. I got sick of it. And now I need to go. And to end in Chicago. Okay. If you haven't been to Chicago, it's a beautiful city. Um, so the thing is, is, um, and I'm all about telling the truth about a place. Okay. Same thing with Chicago. People hear about Chicago. You think, oh my God, I'm going to get shot. Oh my God, it's the worst place ever. And it's not. Okay, it's really not. I'm not going to say there's no violence, but it's not nearly as bad as people think. And it's not the worst in the country by any means. But people, you hear that. So why, when it comes to Africa, all I hear is Africa is the motherland. Africa is so rich in resources. It's the richest. I feel like the whole world is rich in resources, but let's not forget that when the Americas were colonized, they also were looking for gold, found gold. There's resources over here too. There's pyramids over here too. And to me, the building in the Americas is more sophisticated, okay? When I went to Senegal, I've never seen such terrible structures and architecture that people started and never finished. Like, hold on a minute, I have to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. What is somebody about? Don't you get more bacteria when you're not circumcised? That's like saying, don't you get more bacteria when you don't shave your head? right somebody could say we should all be bald because hair holds dirt and bacteria just wash your hair does that mean you have to shave your head off bald because of bacteria first of all so what there's bacteria all over everything that's number one okay there's bacteria all over everything no matter what you do um we live in the world of we live in bacteria's world but in terms of like being clean just clean yourself like i wash behind my ears as a girl, you have to wash in the crevices of your vagina. You got to wash all up in, just wash. That's it. <laughs> like cutting off, mutilating your body is crazy because there's a lot of nerve endings 
when men get circumcised, there's a lot of nerve endings that get destroyed. So actually, as a man, a lot of your pleasure gets taken away, but you wouldn't know it because you have nothing to compare it to. Also, a circumcised man um, gives less pleasure to a woman. A lot of women may not know that because they never had sex with a man who's non-circumcised, but that foreskin plays a role. It plays a role sexually in the woman's vagina, and it plays a role with the man's pleasure. Don't have to believe me? Look it up, okay? Why doesn't Philadelphia have trees, though? Shot me when I lived there. I'm from Chicago, best city in the country. I have a lot to say about that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do. I've done videos about Chicago. I'm gonna do another video about it soon on my travel channel. So if you're on my travel channel, uh, definitely check it out because um, I don't think Chicago is the best city in the world. Chicago people love to say that it is a great city though, and I think it. What I do think is that I think Chicago is the most underrated city in America. Um, I think it's a great city and very much underrated. And I like to talk about the truth about a place. Um, Chicago is lovely. Um, and Philadelphia, I do not like Philly. Um, my family gets mad at me about that because I have a lot of Philly roots. Like my parents met in Philly. My dad was born in Philly. My dad's a Floridian, but he was actually born in Philly because his mom went north and his dad died and he went back to Florida and he grew up in between both places. Um, I don't like Philadelphia. But you know what? You say Philly doesn't have any trees. I want to tell you something about Philly though. Philly, even though I'm not a fan of it, I spent a lot of time in Philly last last um, summer, and I probably will again this summer. I want to go to the um, Roots picnic this summer. But the thing about Philly is Philly has Fairmount Park. Fairmount Park is like, I think I think I read it was like seven times the size of Central Park, if my mind can even imagine that. Now, if it's not seven, it might be five. I would look it up right now, but I'm on my computer. My, but I think Fairmount Park is seven times the size of Central Park. Central Park is pretty huge. Philly is poor. That's the only problem. Yes, Philly is poor. Philly is definitely run down. Philly looks old and dusty like old people. They need to be shook off. Someone says, so is there anything good about male circumcision at all? Like, what was their reason for doing it? Well, definitely look into it. It has to do with religion. I talk about, I talk about the patriarchal religions in the world and what they've done and how they've destroyed. See, people think, a lot of people don't read and they don't research. I'm a reader and a researcher, okay? Um, and, sorry, the train's going by. And the world's main patriarchal religions, I've done videos on this in the past, but I'm gonna have to do another one again soon. Um, sorry, the train's going by. I will try to find my old videos and post it below on my YouTube, okay? But, um, it's on my page, the Renaissance Amazon. I've done videos about what patriarchal religion, but it's the patriarchal religions that, you know, taught all this nonsense, you know, mutilating genitals, um, taking away people's pleasure, shaming people for masturbating, shaming people for anything that's anything that's not heterosexual monogamous sex. Okay. Except Judaism allowed, not Judaism, um, Islam allows men to have multiple wives, but is really like, you know, if you're not heterosexual, not monogamous, when really in indigenous cultures, pre-colonial societies, people, nobody was monogamous, okay? People, marriage existed. Marriage definitely existed, but they weren't just having sex with their spouse. Just and believe that, okay? Um, and that's, that, that's, that's what I resonate with, you know? I could get married and I could be in a committed relationship, but I don't believe in strict monogamy, okay? I don't think that's natural. Now, people think that when you say that, that means that you can't fall in love or you can't be committed to someone. Oh, you could be committed. doesn't mean that you just have sex with that one person for the rest of your life. Let's be realistic. A lot of families and people break up great relationships and great families because somebody has sex with somebody else or they had a desire for somebody else. That's so ridiculous. And that's not how traditional cultures work. Um, and is there anything good about circumcision? No. Okay. No. Sorry. I'm sorry. And more men should be upset about that. Okay, because it's something that you can't do anything about. And there's nothing good about mutilating a woman's genitals either. Okay, uh, these women have lifelong pain. They don't have pleasure. Okay, it's a problem. Under matriarchal traditions, goddess traditions, you cannot separate sexuality and spirituality. The two cannot be separated. They are intertwined. It is under patriarchal religion where they wanted to shame everything from the goddess. And that includes sexuality. And that includes people that are not heterosexual, okay? So a lot of black people will say, 
Why are we talking about this gay issue? Black people, black people, you know, we, we have our problems and we need to care about black people's issues. Why do we care about gay issues? People don't understand how the two are connected. They were both chastised at the same time. Okay. Under matriarchal traditions, people understood that there are men with female spirits and women with male spirits and they have their special place and, you know, um, sexual suppression wasn't, wasn't pushed on people. You didn't have perversion. <coughs> women might've been naked and nobody was raping them. It's patriarchal religion that made women the evil temptress and said, you got raped. You shouldn't have been wearing it. Like right now, me having this on, if it, if it's hot outside, this is great. Some countries I'm showing too much skin. That's crazy. We were born naked. Someone said, who the fuck is still general mutilating women? Um, they're doing it all in Africa. And some um, Asian countries. What do I think about Ghana's anti-LGBT laws? I did a video about that um, a couple days ago, so check it out. If you're on my YouTube page, Your Body Scientist 81, definitely check out my page, Makeda Blooded Travels, on YouTube. Okay, YouTube and IG. And if you're on Makeda Blood of Travels, definitely check out my page, The Body Scientist, because I do different videos and I don't post them. Sometimes I post them on this page, but not that page, depending on the topic, okay? But yeah, female gen genital mutilation is definitely still being practiced in Ghana. From what I can read, uh, most people are against it, but it still happens, okay? It's still happening in other West African countries, okay? So the fact that People want to suppress people's bodies. Like, who cares? I don't believe in trying to, I don't, the, the, the transformer stuff, the transy stuff, I don't believe in that. I think that's delusional and crazy. But I think it's a different topic than gay. And I think that, um, tr you know, trying to pass laws to say that if somebody is gay, they could, be, they could be put to death. And that Ghana is saying, if you don't snitch on somebody, like if there's somebody around you who's, engaging in same-sex activities and you don't snitch on them, you go to jail for five years. That's crazy to me, okay? That's absolutely crazy to me. So if there's a gay, somebody has a gay person in their family and they don't snitch, the whole family's going to jail? Or somebody accuses you of knowing and you didn't even know and you go into jail? Like, that's backwards. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way that's a good thing. And I think the fact that people are so um, concerned about what people do with their body is insane. Unless they're harming a child or they're raping somebody, there shouldn't be, you know what I'm saying? No. Like two consenting adults, why do you care? That's all coming from religion. I feel like, no, I don't feel like I know. The world's three main patriarchal religions, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, are the problem with the world. It's a problem for these wars. It's a problem for all this suppression. It's a problem with all this perversion. Every time you see some mass molestation or something of, of young people, or it's always in some religious organization. You didn't think there were countries that give a death sentence for it. Yeah, Uganda. There's a couple other, there's like four African countries. I think I said Northern Nigeria. Uh, I think I said, I think I saw Somalia. Okay. Now America is not that crazy. Okay. Like we've never, and our worst, haven't been that, that crazy. So to me, the more I travel, the more I appreciate America. I appreciate America for the choices that we have, the options that we have, the ability to express ourselves and be ourselves. Um, people may not agree. Somebody may not agree. But we can speak the truth. When I came back from Senegal and I talked about the very real things that I saw and I felt like there was a whole lying ad campaign on the internet to make Senegal seem like it was so great. And I, I spoke in depth about this on my, my page, Makeda Blooded Travels. Okay. And then I spoke, I have like a two hour practically video on my page, The Body Scientist, where I'm talking about, it's called Dakar, Dakar, Toxic Dakar. I have several videos about Senegal. Okay. Between my, my travel page and The Body Scientist and The Renaissance Amazon, you can check all my YouTube pages. Um, but I felt like I was lied to. I felt like it was a scam. I felt like everybody was talking about how beautiful it was. And it wasn't. Okay. Out of all the places that I've been, it was the least beautiful place. The, 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 I wanted to stab my eyes out. That's how not pretty it was. Even the beach wasn't pretty. I'm just sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to 
people are like, oh, you're attacking Africa. I'm just speaking the truth of my observations. Look, I don't like Cleveland, Ohio. I don't like Youngstown, Ohio. I came through Youngstown, Ohio a couple months ago when I drove from New York to Chicago. Youngstown was the most hideous place I've ever seen in my life. I, there's no way I could live in Youngstown, Ohio. And Cleveland made me nauseous. It's so ugly. Even the, the flowers were ugly. Okay, so I'll say that about my own country. Like, I'm, I don't care. I'm not going to be like, oh, because it's America, it's the best. And because it's that. No, I'm just talking about what I observe. And I'm a city girl. I love Mexico City. I love Havana, Cuba. I love New York City. I love Chicago. I love New Orleans. Okay. Those are cities that I really love. Pittsburgh is pretty cool. San Francisco used to be big. San Francisco got too many drug addicts. Okay. Um, not enough black people in it. No soul. But it's it's pretty, but it's a mess. Okay, the whole Bay Area, Oakland is a mess. Oakland and Philly are the same bucket of dusty and cracked out to me. So you know, but I love Amsterdam and Paris, right? Couldn't stand Madrid. Don't like London. Um, and definitely, Dakar is on the bottom of my list of cities that I've been to. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I want to talk about. Okay. That was the summation of my video that air pollution is the second leading cause of death in Africa. Okay. The whole continent, South Africa. And I, I, I used to not have a desire to go to South Africa because of things that I heard from people who had visited, uh, people I know, Pakistan, different, different people that I know that visited South Africa that told me different things. I won't get into that here. Um, but then my mom went, she loved it. And because South Africa has a history of medical cannabis, I felt like, hmm, you know, let me go check it out. And I like some of the architecture I see in South Africa when I look at the Airbnbs. But when I saw that 100% of South Africans are, are breathing air that is so polluted that it's five times worse than the World Health Organization's standards, I thought maybe I don't want to go over there because if Senegal is number 47 in the world and I never had such a hard time breathing, and, I'm, and all the countries that's above Senegal, that's worse. I haven't been to any of those countries, right? So it says Senegal was number 47, okay? And I, it was tough for me, okay, to breathe. But to look at the fact that Ghana is 27 and Nigeria is 18, I'm like, I don't know if I can, I, like, to me, I'm like, I really don't think I can handle going there because air, we have to breathe all day. And I'm telling you, my chest, I had heart pains and chest pains when I was in Senegal from the air, okay? And, um, but Colombia is number 63. I've been to Colombia, didn't have a problem, except some of the cities, the air, you know, was bad. It was worse in Dakar. But I've noticed when I'm in the Caribbean and like Central America, like San Jose, Costa Rica, the air in San Jose, Costa Rica was, that was the first time I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm dying. But the rest of Costa Rica is fine. It's just San Jose. So a lot of these Caribbean, you know, these other cities, these other countries, their fuel standards aren't like America, right? Um, the Colombia is number 63. Uh, the Netherlands is number 87. I've been to the Netherlands. The United States is number 99. UK, number 101. I've been there. Costa Rica, number 107, been there. Canada, number 111. Um, you know, so if Ghana was number 47 and I was struggling, and South Africa is 39, Ethiopia, 23, Ghana, 27, Nigeria, 18, Rwanda, number 13, those are all countries I thought about going to. I've heard great things about Kigali, Rwanda, and they, they love milk. Okay, and I'm a milk lover. I've heard they, they worship milk. I've heard lovely things about Kigali, Rwanda. I know it's a very safe country. But the fact that it has number 13 worst air, air quality in the world. Okay. And I'm sensitive in the sense of like, I really get sick. <laughs> okay, I really get sick. And that's a good thing because there's people who live in that air and they, they feel fine. But that doesn't mean you are fine. And then people end up with cancer and all these health problems and they wonder why. And again, like I said, the life expectancy in Ghana is 64 years old. The life expectancy in South Africa is 65 years old. The life expectancy in Nigeria is 52. And the life expectancy in Senegal is 68. Now, let me see something. 
let me see what the life expectancy is. I'm not all, all high tech like everybody else could be having all these, you know, they be bringing up stuff in there. Um, okay, life expectancy in the USA is 77 years old as of 2020. The life expectancy in Mexico is 70. In Costa Rica, it's 79. In Colombia, it's 75. Um, let's see where else. Let's see. In Cuba, it's 78. Okay. None of the African countries I looked at have no life expectancy anywhere close to 70. Okay. Nowhere close to 70. So yeah, if you have, oops, if you have, um, if you have breathing issues, asthma, bronchial issues, you want to stay out of those countries. Um, the Indian, India, China, and Africa, okay, have some of the worst air quality in the world. Some of the best air quality in the world is in Europe, in the Americas. And those are just facts. People get mad. Oh, you're hating on Africa. It's just true. I report the truth. I study. Okay, I look up facts. I think for myself. A lot of poor countries burn trash in unregulated factories. Yes, they do burn trash. They definitely burn trash, okay? They're burning tires, they're burning trash, they're burning trees, they're cutting down trees, okay? And, and before I looked up these facts, I said, I like, I prefer South America. I prefer the Americas. North America to South America to the Caribbean. I prefer it over Africa, okay? Now, I'm not going to say that there aren't some lush parts of Africa. Uh, to me, it seems more in the East, Eastern um, countries. But to me, it's too much desert, okay? I'm not a fan of desert. A lot of deforestation. Ghana has a lot of erosion in the soil. Like, the soil is really... Um, I'm going to do a video about soil very soon. Um, but a lot of the soil in Ghana is so depleted. And I could look at it and see, I told you I'm not a farmer, but I'm like, that land don't look nice. It don't. Okay. It doesn't. I could be in New York city and drive an hour outside of New York city. And I've seen some of the luscious land, the most, most fertile farmland I've ever seen. In New York State. I used to be a New York City snob where I'm like, I don't care about the rest of my state. The rest of the state might as well be Idaho. I don't care. And it was three years ago, three, four years ago, I was in um I started to discover upstate New York. And not even that far upstate. Like this summer, I definitely this summer I'm gonna take a road trip into Canada, down through um the Adirondack Mountains from Montreal into to New York City. I love Vermont. I drove to Maine with my mother years ago. And we drove to New Hampshire and Vermont, and uh, um, it's beautiful, okay? That whole area. But New York State takes the cake. New York State is nicer than California. I'm going to do a video about that, too, from my travel channel. New York State is has more trees, more lakes, more waterfalls by the thousands, okay? Thousands more than California. And before I looked up that, I could see it. I'm going from California from north to south. I'm not – it's okay, but I just saw a little bit of New York State, and I'm like, "What?" So New York City has New York State has something called the Black Dirt Region. It's some of the most fertile soil in the world. Look it up, the Black Dirt Region. Okay. Yeah, upstate New York, upstate is gorgeous. I'm definitely going to be exploring upstate this summer. So again, okay, my number one priority is health. So I don't want to travel someplace. Definitely not live someplace where the air quality is some of the worst in the world. The food is all ultra processed food. Okay. I, I got to be covered up because me showing my skin is going to offend people because having, you know, the more melanin you have, the more sun you need on your skin in order to get enough vitamin D. Okay. It's a, you know, which prevents cancer. The cancer rates are out of control in sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. So in every category, the soil, the water, the air, the food, okay, it is the worst in the world, some of the worst in the world. And you don't believe me, go look it up. 
Someone said before George Washington Carver, America was going through the same thing. Look up the Great Dust Bowl. America almost lost agriculture. Thank you for telling me that. I'm going to look that up. George Washington Carver, a black American. Black Americans have contributed so much to the world, so much to the world, okay? So much. We'd be living in the dark ages if it wasn't for the inventions of black Americans. So I'm going to look it up. Thank you for telling me that. But what, all I know is that when I was looking at West Africa, it just looked dusty all the time. And people think that I'm trying to be ignorant. I'm like, no, I can see it in the air. This is dude passport heavy. He's a Ghanaian from Chicago. And he's in Ghana and he's posting all these videos. And, and every single video, I'm like, that air looks thick and smoggy. Like I'm choking looking at it. And I'll say that and people are like, oh, you're attacking Africa. You never have anything positive to say. It's the damn truth. It looks thick and smoggy. If somebody posts a video in New York with piles of garbage everywhere and someone says it looks dirty, I'm not going to be like, oh, you're attacking New York. But like, that's what you see in the damn video. And there is a lot of garbage. Mexico City has the same amount of people as New York. Mexico City is clean like Chicago. I live in Chicago. Chicago is so clean. When people from New York come here, they, they feel like it's fake. Like you can eat off the ground. Chicago is so clean. It's amazing. It's amazing. I don't even understand it. Now, New York, now New York has way more people, way more businesses, way more movement than Chicago. But Mexico City is comparable, and Mexico City is clean like Chicago. Mexico City has a lot of beautiful trees, a lot of beautiful plants. I love Mexico City. It's one of my favorite cities in the world, okay? Um, <clears throat> so if somebody says it about New York, okay, it's true. The truth is the truth. In America, we, 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 we aren't afraid of speaking the truth. Now, a lot of other countries, you can't do that. Nobody can speak up. Everybody's a damn puppet and a follower. Not me. And I live right here in Turtle Island, so I can say what I want. Um, somebody said, I don't understand. Black dirt region, soil comparable to ever. I don't, I don't understand what you wrote. But yeah, look at the black region, the black dirt region in New York. Then in the United States, we have all this cannabis medicine exploding. A lot of you don't know, or maybe you do. I'm finishing a master's degree in medical cannabis science and therapeutics. And um, there's so many applications. And what about the UK and London? What's your question? I can't, I can't read your mind. Um, but um, the fact that cannabis medicine is so readily available. Now, I did see that Ghana had passed a law to legalize it. and mm, Cannabis is legal in South Africa, but... They have no system like it's cannabis is legal in South Africa to consume, but it's not legal to sell or buy it. Oh, you weren't listening. I said the air, I said the air in UK was 101. I said that I said that when a list of worst to best, the America was number 99, the UK was 101. I said that a few times. Um, Yes, the Great Dust Bowl in no topsoil. Is that supposed to say topsoil? It says till soil. But U.S. agriculture was 100% Afro-American. Now it's less than 5% Afro-American. Yeah, and that's the problem. Black Americans, we need to stand up for our land. We do not need to be moving to other people's countries and trying to save their land, which is all ran through and eroded and depleted, okay? Our land in America is better first of all we have lots of great land number two number three this is our land this is where our people are buried okay most of us have no connection to africa and the thing is is when africans move to america they don't come here with the mindset of how can they make america better they don't come with the mindset of how can i be humble and give back they don't come with the mindset of how can i assimilate they don't they stay in their own groups you know a lot, of, a lot of people are resistant to assimilating, and people applaud that. But when we move to their countries, we're expected to assimilate. We're expected in every single way. You know, as a woman, dumb yourself down. You can't speak up. You got to go cover up. You know, like, and then you're d dealing with, you know, mass corruption. And, and uh, to think that. They see us like as oh brother and sister when they don't even get along with each other because of different tribes. Yorubas and Igbos hated each other. You know when I, I know when I was a kid, people I knew that were Yoruba said if they played with an Igbo person, they would get beat. Now, I don't know if it's that bad anymore, but I'm just saying. 
And now there's all these, you know, illegal people coming into the country and taking our land and taking our jobs and saying that, oh, Americans are lazy when really we just work to not be working for slave labor. We don't work for slave wages. We, we have standards over here. And it seems that when we leave, we have to lower our standards or we have to allow others co to come from the outside and lower our standards. And when we say something, we're xenophobic. But any other country in the world that happens, people will be outraged. There are a whole bunch of outsiders coming and taking their land and doing that. It's a problem. And Black Americans need to wake up with that. Because running across the ocean, that means you're a runner. You're not a fighter. The fighters don't leave. The fighters stay on their land to make it better. America didn't become a better place because everybody fled. And that's why a lot of these countries that are struggling are so bad because people flee. And a lot of them don't look back. And then you have Africans when they come to America, probably the UK too, I can't speak on it, but I know when they come to America, a lot of them are coming to make money to send back home, to build back home. Americans don't move to Africa to make money to send back to America to help their family and go to Africa to take the resources and make money to build back in America. No, when black Americans move to Africa, they go like, oh, I wanna invest in Africa. I wanna help make Africa better. Africans aren't coming to America with that mindset. Now, much love to my African friends. I have lots of them and my African friends in DC, some of the most knowledgeable, you know, and, and probably might think like that in terms of how they can give back to black Americans. But most Africans aren't thinking that. Um, someone says Chicago is their second favorite city. Um, and then they asked, that's the, I don't know what that's about the reason why I don't like the UK. I did a video about the UK. I didn't like it um, for so many reasons. Um, I don't like the way they talk. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be offensive. It's just honest. Um, I don't like the way people in Baltimore talk either. Sorry. But um, the food in the UK, I, to me, European food is overrated, period. Okay. The food in the Americas is also way better. And I'm not just talking about North America. I'm talking about the Americas. Like, is is better than the food in Europe. I think European food is overrated. The UK, I was in food hell. It was like the nastiest food I ever had. And the UK has a lot of processed foods. Okay, they're, they're, the processed food there is way worse than it is in the United States. London, I, I couldn't find real anything. Everything was super processed, and then everything was just gross. Like I never had anything when I was in London that tasted good, not even slightly. It was just like activating new taste buds of nasty. I was just like sick. And I was so hungry. Like, I have no desire to go back there. Um, any good books on this topic? Why don't you do your research? <laughs> there's, there's plenty of books. I have plenty of books in my house. And sometimes I say I'm going to write books under the, the uh, thing, but I'm busy. But do you guys ever try to do your own research? Do you buy books? Do you read books? Do you look up studies? I do all those things. So if you look for it, see what you can find. Okay. There's lots of studies. I'll, I'll post studies below about some of the things I was talking about with the air and the water and all that and the food. I'll post some of the studies below on my YouTube page. Okay, but do do you do your, your own research. See what you can find. It's not hard. Google air quality in Ghana. Google highly processed foods in Ghana and how they're calling it fresh foods. They're calling it fresh foods and it's highly processed. Google cancer rates amongst children in um, Ghana or Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, just Google it. You'll find study after study after study, article after article. But I'm gonna end this here. I, I got what I wanted to say. Now I'm live on my YouTube page at Body Scientist 81, and I'm live on Instagram at Makeda Voter Travels because I'm blocked from going live on my IG, The Body Scientist. And, um, and I, I felt like this could also apply to my travel page too. But if you're on my travel page, be sure to follow me at The Body Scientist, okay? Um, on YouTube, The Body Scientist 81, or on IG, The underscore Body underscore Scientist. And if you're on my Body Scientist page, be sure to follow me at Makeda Valletta Travels. Um, and you guys are welcome. If you learned something from this video, please like it and please share it. I'm a truth teller that likes to get blocked, okay? I have so much more to say about this topic and I will be talking about it on different pages. So definitely follow me at the Renaissance Amazon, follow me in the Body Scientist, and follow me in Makeda Valletta Travels. So I'm gonna be talking about it a lot more. Um, it's really important. And I'm just tired of the 
false narratives. And health, you know, health is my number one priority. I don't want to be anywhere in the world where I'm putting my health in jeopardy. Okay. People will be afraid to have sex, but then they're fine going to go live in a freaking bowl of pollution where your air, your water, everything is polluted. That makes no sense. That's a lot worse than having sex with anybody. Okay. Um, interesting and insightful perspective on individuals coming to the U S yeah. Um, I'll put my social media links on the YouTube page after I publish it. I, you got see people nowadays. I know a lot of YouTubers and stuff. They got words popping up places while well, I'm on live, so I can't do it. But let's take it old school and just pay attention, okay? Take a piece of paper and a pen. I said it several times. You want my IG? The Body Scientist. It's the Body Scientist with an underscore in between each word. The underscore body underscore scientist. Okay? There's the Renaissance Amazon underscore nine. The Renaissance Amazon. There's an underscore in between each word. The Renaissance Amazon nine. Okay? Makeda Valletta Travels, Makeda Valletta underscore travels. Okay, those are my three IG pages. On YouTube, it's the Body Scientist 81, the Renaissance Amazon, and Makeda Valletta Travels. Okay, you can easily find me. Um, you say you'll save your money and go into the UK. Some people like it. I just don't. I like, I really liked Amsterdam. I love the Netherlands. The Netherlands is one of my favorite countries. Okay. I really love, and Amsterdam has a lot of black people too. A lot of people don't realize that. And they look like us, meaning black Americans, because they come from Suriname. So they come from the, the, our side of the, the ocean. Um, um, they have good style I, and they're very active and healthy. Um, I really like the Netherlands. I like Paris. Paris reminded me a lot in New York. One of the reasons why it's Chicago's Chicago is a great city, but it's boring. It's not anywhere near as interesting as New York or Paris or New Orleans. Okay. Um, somebody said Switzerland is nice. Iceland is good. Yeah. So, um, definitely look into what I'm saying. If you learn something, like the video, please share the video. Um, and let's get to the truth. Okay. So I hope you guys have a good day. And um, I'll see you in my future videos. Talk to you later. Thank you for listening. Bye.